these reports about Syria are ridiculous. It's theater. There has been constant unreliable reporting about Syria from the beginning, as there was about Iraq, as there was about Libya. We all remember that staged statue toppling of Saddam that had the same actors as the Hollywood video from that Israel made, propaganda, where they quoted anonymous French filmmakers and had these goons running around who we later saw with Chalabi beating the statue with shoes that the army had pulled down in an event where they had armored vehicles blocking off all entrances to the park so where the military did a complete psyops for that statue pulling and of course we weren't greeted in the, fl in the streets with flowers and cakes the occupation was ongoing people dying every day and they weren't all dead enders or Saddam loyalists they just didn't want their country occupied by foreigners who were blowing up all their infrastructure cut off all their electricity de uh, destroyed their sources of water clean water anyway and did house raids and shot people and all manner of evil in Libya we saw all the bogus reporting uh, the most infamous is probably that rally they had in Tripoli that was shown on the BBC and all these other ABC and NBC, CBS, Fox, the Alphabet Soup Liar Networks. And they had Indian flags in the video. It was a rally in India of something completely irrelevant, an older video. And they acted like, hey, both flags have green in them. That's similar enough. Let's just say this is in Libya in Tripoli complete garbage made it on the airwaves anyway nobody caught it doesn't that but it takes anybody on the internet I caught it people say hey that's not the Libyan flag that's the flag from India didn't matter it made it all the way to the mass media nobody checked it because as long as it fits with the government's talking points it gets to go on the air they see what they want to see they figure the public's too ignorant to, to figure it out and they did it anyway We've caught the mass media in Syria lying time after time after time in the same areas where this supposed massacre happened. Now, that massacre certainly happened. And they said a hundred people died. But look at the hypocrisy. The U.S. killed or helped assist to kill over a hundred people in Yemen the same day. They killed six children in Afghanistan the same day. They killed Pac people in Pakistan the same day with drones. I can think of nothing more cowardly than to send an unarmed drone in to murder targets at random. They kill targets in mass and just say, hey, collateral damage. And I also love the prejudice of saying, oh, they killed women and children. Because men don't count. A boy, I guess, counts, but men don't count. If you're a man, your life's not as worth as much as a woman or a child. But it's not like you have any more defense than a woman or a child does to a drone coming in and bombing you or artillery falling on your head. A bullet is a bullet. It'll kill anybody. It doesn't matter. A civilian is a civilian. That's all you need to say. But these journalists have been all over Syria. We've got fake pictures from the BBC about which they use from Iraq. And then they got on the air. That got on the internet. That was in the papers. They're using pictures of the wrong country of a different massacre that was by the United States. That doesn't matter. They fit the narrative, so they put it on there, and they blame it on the government of Syria. We've had them, had cameras set up, pointing in certain areas, waiting, and then a bomb goes off, and they go, oh, look at the bombs, as the rebels did, and they blame that on the government. Time after time, we have caught these people lying in Syria, in these same towns, in homes, and now they have the massacre. And it's already coming out once we finally get some real journalists, not the embedded ones, talking to the people on the ground. And they're saying, no, it wasn't the government. It was the rebels butchering everyone. We have hand-to-hand -hand combat. We have babies with their throats slit. People stabbed in the face, shot at point-blank range. That was the rebels. The government was pinned down in the bunker. Their artillery killed people, for sure, in this crossfire. They're fighting a band of foreign-assisted mercenaries in the middle of the country and of course people die but whose fault is it who's really doing the massacre who would go and slit throats of babies and it all got blamed on the government of course but we know who's been lying and lying in the past it's theater it's as theaters when Eisenhower and CD Jackson went into Buchenwald with the old soap and lampshades baloney 
It says theater is the Wall Street media reporting the rally in Tripoli. It says theater is when the mass media reported pictures of Iran's supposed nuclear facilities that were nothing but rotated pictures of North Korea's facilities that CNN tried to say was in Iran. But what happens when they get busted in these stories? Nothing. It gets ignored and they'll just lie again. And the public, they assume, isn't going to remember it. And they're usually right. Just last week, uh, the same press, Al Jazeera, Qatar's Al Jazeera, which helped start the war in Libya, said that Syrian rebels had killed six different ministers. None of it was true. They claimed a Syrian general, General Sha'ar, had been killed. And that was on Al Jazeera, on television. And it was repeated by the normal message force multipliers of ABC and NBC, BS, Fox. And yet, that same day, the same general, General Shahar, shows up on TV, very much alive, dismissing the propaganda that all of our state-owned media had said was true. He wasn't dead. They killed clerics in Lebanon, and they blamed that on Assad and the government. There is no benefit to that. There is no motive to that. It doesn't make any sense for the Syrian government to go into Lebanon and kill some Sunni clerics. I mean, there is no better way and nothing dumber, no better way to really light a fire and get more rebels going against you than to go kill some religious leaders in a neighboring country. That is totally insane. That does not benefit the Syrians whatsoever. It benefits the rebels and there was no evidence that the Syrian government killed these people. It was propaganda. It's like when SITE Gave us all those fake Bin Laden tapes and Osama Bin Laden is giving praise to hijackers about 9-11, calling them out by name, and three of the people he called out by name weren't even dead. It turned out to be that botched list the FBI had to retract before they got onto some new names, but it didn't matter. How could Osama Bin Laden get the names wrong if he's supposed to be the mastermind of 9-11? These liars got their stories messed up. The Israeli group made their own lie with their own fake tape and they must have been really ticking off the American and Turkish groups because they weren't all communicating on that. They had their all, all their lies so twisted. Then Bin Laden tapes got more and more ridiculous as time went on. Finally they went to voice only. It was proven that it wasn't his voice. It was ridiculous and then it culminated with the whole Nosama thing. Oh we got him, dumped his body in the ocean, had a rapid DNA test, blah blah blah. Total crap. Seymour Hirsch reported about it in the New Yorker, saying intelligence agencies must have been involved. And this ought to have been major information to Trumpet, but there's been so much kookery and nonsense said about 9-11, posing as the truth, that the cleaner, clearer facts just get lost in a sea of sensationalism. Just like RFK and JFK, those stories meet the same fate. Which is why the whole topic of conspiracy has such a stigma associated with it. My other pet peeve is when people real snootedly say buzzwords like CIA Mossad MI6 or some other overly vague generic like New World Order. I can't stand that. It's lazy. It's inaccurate. It explains nothing. Name the names and show the documents. Give examples. And speaking of which, one name on Syria, we've got Joseph Lieberwitz, a.k.a. Joe Lieberman. And he's got his own chicken hawk plan for Syria. This guy shouldn't even be in the Senate. He lost his primary race, and he switched parties from the left-wing imperialist to a fake independent imperialist. And he got support from the right-wing imperialist to support his campaign. But he's still there which shows you how much the two parties will work together to keep one of APAC's favorites in office. So Mr. Joseph Kappen Trade Lieberwitz is pushing his chicken hawk plan for Syria and like any other armchair general is probably the dumbest strategy imaginable. He's pushing two ideas. The first is no shocker because it's the neocon solution to everything and that's to bomb them. That will fail and fail miserably. This is not Libya or post-Gulf War I Iraq, and it's certainly not Afghanistan. Syria has the fifth largest anti-air defense in the world by quite a gap. Moreover, 
it's well trained and training matters equally as much as the equipment our Air Force is not well trained because many of the multi hundred million dollar aircraft they have don't even work like the F-22 Raptors and the F-35s they all have problems it's like having a brand new basketball gym with no basketballs useless and Joe's other idea is something that John Kerry agrees with him on and that's the creation of safety zones which already failed in Iraq it's a failed neoconservative plan that they tried over there the idea is to carve out a small area just a piece of the country and pile all the forces in there and then you just keep doing that in the country to draw them into attacking you well what if the enemy decides not to give you a decisive battle and instead goes on a war of attrition and guerrilla warfare did we learn nothing in Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan the generals hawkish as they are have rejected this asinine plan plan <laughs> you know what they would do if you wanted to succeed is you have to get good intel on the ground and know who supports you and who doesn't and sidestep the anti-air with superior ground and water but they're not going to do that because that would also have casualties if you go on the ground you could actually lose Americans so you're going to have to get more mercenaries to do that and you're going to have to have mad intelligence something we don't have because we have a bunch of idiots running everything and an air raid bombing you can't have a no-fly zone uh, like that first of all Syria isn't using their aircraft so that doesn't matter so these air on airplanes that we spend all these billions hundreds of billions of dollars on are worthless and they're worthless anyway but it doesn't matter because America builds these giant toys for the sake of it for the sake of giving Lockheed Martin and Co all this money we have the F-22 Raptor which costs 422 million a piece and they bought hundreds of these things so there's your trillions of dollars a trillion dollars okay if you made a million dollars a year a million dollars it would take you a million years a million years like go back to dinosaur times making a million dollars a year to make a trillion dollars and they've wasted it on these planes and they don't even work the pilots are passing out they can't get oxygen they've got this convoluted oxygen system because it costs more and they've got this laminate for the stealth that goes on the skin of the plane and the chemicals from that are getting into the oxygen system and knocking the pilots out so they can't even fly and if it rains they have to regroup this stuff on the plane and if they go through dust they have to regroup the stuff on the plane and the reason I say it's not the oxygen system alone it's the laminate stuff is because even the ground crew is getting sick Dina Ross did a good report on this and then we've got the F-15 or the F-18s F-15s actually an okay plane but the F-18s uh, have this convoluted oxygen system as well. I don't know why they went off the liquid bottle system. And then you have the uh, F-117, which also has the scoop stuff, but not the wacky oxygen, but they're not having the same problems. So it seems to be a combination of the two. We'll see how long it takes the Pentagon to figure that out. I think they're probably not going to use the F-22 Raptors. They're just going to buy them and not use them. Because, hey, they got their paycheck, so, so what? <laughs> they're going to have to use something else. Uh, if they use anything at all, they don't care. You see, it's like the Bradley fighting vehicle. What it's supposed to be a transport vehicle end up being a hybrid of everything. And when you hybrid something, it ends up not doing anything really well. But it certainly costs a lot because you can put armor on it, you can put a tank thing on it, you can put scouting on it, you can put every bell and whistle possible to involve every industry possible, and you end up with something that costs almost a billion dollars per unit, and it doesn't work. But it doesn't matter. That's not the point of war. We don't care. They don't care about the troops. They don't care who dies. They're not even really worried about threats. They just want to build these really expensive toys to involve as many industries as they can to spend as much of your money as they can. That is the military industrial complex. As for Syria, it's Russia's last port where their navy has on the Mediterranean. It is where the pipeline from Iran, the gas line, is going through Iraq to Syria. It breaks the Baku monopoly from the BTC line to Turkey. That's why the Turks are in a fritz about it. The Europeans are in a fritz because the largest holder in the BTC consortium is British Petroleum. So the Brits have a motive. 
not the British themselves, but the companies that run their government, like BP being one huge influence, they don't want this line going through with a rival line that they're not part of the consortium for. Uh-uh, they're not going to have it. Of course not. It would benefit Europe. It's another source of natural gas, but they don't care. They know why lower your gas prices, why lower your electric costs when you can raise the profits of British Petroleum. That's what matters. And of course the Americans are drug into it because the Israelis are in it. Israel wants more land in Syria. They have this greater goal which they've all written out. But they want more land in Lebanon as well. And they are the next target after Syria is Lebanon. That's where they're moving with this. And Israel completely controls US foreign policy. Because more than half of our Congress is blackmailed. They're out there seeing hookers and snorting blow and doing all manner of crime. And then we have all these yes men, the APAC. They're completely blackmailed because the phones are tapped. They set them up with honey traps. And we've got a bunch of immoral, old shaggy men, mostly, and some old shaggy women that are easy to manipulate, easy to blackmail, and they're in charge of the country. And these people are idiots. And that is why we've got to get them out of office or we will always be following Israel's lead, a fascist nation of racial colonization and apartheid dictating the foreign policy of the United States. That's why these primaries, or we're talking a week, days away, June 5th and June 12th, you've got to elect Jenny Werman, you've got to elect Steve Collette, get rid of Henry Waxman, and you've got to elect Karen Kutowski and get rid of Bob Sopa Goodlatte. And she's winning her race. I don't have the stats on the other ones. I hope they're winning in California. But in Virginia, we've got Karen Kutowski beating Bob Goodlatte right now. And it's high time we had some farmers from Virginia back in D.C. Those are the kind of politicians that did the best in the past. Real people who do real work. She was also a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. But she's a farmer. She knows the people. She's honest. And I would love to have farmers from Virginia back in there instead of these lawyers and these sycophants, these Chicago mobsters, these transplant Yankees in there trying to represent Virginians. Bob Goodlatte is nothing but a yes man for John Boehner, that little crybaby. And they just follows him around and votes how he's told, doesn't even read the bills, wouldn't understand them if he did, doesn't know a thing about economics, doesn't know a thing about agriculture, doesn't know a thing about farming. Yet he's representing a district that's primarily agriculture and ranching. He's an idiot. He doesn't need to be there. He's Mr. Sopa. Mr. Sopa, get rid of him. Support Karen Kwiatkowski. Get rid of Bob. I might even go work in D.C. If I had an honest congressperson like that, I would go there. You want to talk about the uh, fecal matter hitting the fan, put me there. I will expose everything they do. I will throw it up on YouTube or wherever, Vimeo, and tell you exactly what they're doing, exactly what's in the bill. I will read it out to you. We will have real transparency, not the BS like Obama, another Chicago mobster. He, t he talked about transparency? Shit. He also talked about peace? Ha! Huh. That guy is a liar. I don't know how he can continue to lie and lie and some suckers out there still believe it. All they gotta do is see someone sing a song and give a smile and read the teleprompter, and they're just, uh-huh, yeah, yes we can, uh-huh. They just follow him like zombie sheep. It's disgusting, you know, everything that's wrong with the United States, our foreign policy and murdering everybody and getting into intervention in Syria now, another freaking war. It's not just the politicians' fault, it's your fault. It's your fault for voting for these idiots. And I know the votes get manipulated, but trust me, with Obama, there are a lot of people who not only voted for that guy, they were in love with that guy. That is how stupid people are. They want to be lied to. There's so much hatred for Bush and the Republicans that they cannot see it when the guy's got a D next to his name because it doesn't fit their paradigm. Wake up, people.